This is a talk about Central Pacific El Nino and decadal climate change in the North Pacific. So first a review of decadal, uh, the decadal modes of North Pacific variability. Uh, this is the pattern of the PDO, Pacific Decadal Oscillation. Uh, this is the pattern of the NPGO. These are patterns in SST. Uh, these two patterns of oceanic variability have an atmospheric expression, the PDO in the Aleutian Low. Uh, the NPGO and the NPO. So we all know this stuff uh, pretty well. We also know that in terms of, uh, of the uh, NPO and NPGO, uh, the important component of atmospheric variability that is related to NPGO actually occurs over the southern pole of the NPO over Hawaii. Uh, so that's the southern pole right there. If we make a time series of that southern pole, uh, we get this black curve here. If we now integrate, if we compare that now with the NPGO index, which is here in blue, and uh, we basically take this black time series and integrate it, and we compare it to the NPGO, uh, we find that they share a strong correlation, 0.65, especially in the low frequency. So this seems to be the dynamical, you know, center uh, of the NPO and NPGO dynamics, uh, or at least is, let's say of the NPGO dynamics, uh, very well. So. Uh, so in some sense we can say the NPGO then is the low frequency oceanic expression of the NPO. However, we know from work by Dan and Bruce that there's also a high frequency uh, component of the NPO and this high frequency component uh, signature in the SST looks something like this uh, with this horseshoe pattern and we know that this, uh, this uh, SST signature together with the NPO is important in terms of ENSO dynamics. I'll refer to this as the seasonal expression of the NPO. And so here, let me just uh, uh, put the NPO and, uh, and the SST NPO footprint uh, at the, you know, during the winter, uh, which I defined here as January, February, March. So this is kind of the signature uh, of the two. Uh, so very well. So the idea is that uh, previous pa you know, work, like Penland and Magorian have pointed out how this signature of the SST leads to end. So uh, further work by Dan, Bruce, uh, and other work by Mike, and also uh, Chang on the meridional mode showed that in fact there's a, uh, there's a dynamics by which you know, variability of the atmosphere here can actually trigger a warming uh, here in the SSC, which leads to a warming in the central tropical Pacific. Very good. So the idea is then that this uh, winter NPO leads the expression of ENSO by about one year. Uh, and uh, so the, to make, put this into context here now is the expression of canonical ENSO, which is, you know, the ENSO that has an expression uh, in the coast of South America, uh, high SST anomalies. So if this is the winter peak in January, February, March, uh, then it means that if we look a year prior to that, the SLP and SST patterns should look something like that. Uh, we can test this by just taking a, an index of the canonical ENSO, like Nino 3, and do correlations uh, lead correlations with sea surface temperature and sea level pressure. If we do that, uh, these are the two uh, patterns that emerge that are leading the canonical ENSO, and you can see that there's a fair bit of correspondence between these patterns and then the NPO pattern uh, with uh, the, you know, the dark blue pole over Hawaii and the SST uh, signature here. If we now uh, think about the tropics, the recent literature has also pointed a lot of attention on the on a non what has been referred to as the non canonical expression of ENSO. Uh, it is different from the canonical expression that it doesn't have a peak or a maximum loading in the in the close to the South American coast, but it's more displaced towards the central or western uh, tropical Pacific. So this is what it looks like, and this type of expression of uh, central Pacific warming has been connected to hurricanes activity, storm tracks, you know, uh, there's the, you know, the hurricanes papers, the Webster in Science, uh, and more recently actually also connected to climate change by the Nature paper, September 2009 by Yi et al. So, so the issue is, uh, how about this particular expression of ENSO, does it also have a precursor pattern? And yes, it does. And it looks a lot similar to the NPO expression, as you can see. So this is now the precursor patterns for the non-canonical ENSO. And this also makes sense because in the footprinting mechanism or meridional mode, what you have is that the NPO southern pole variability triggers the SSC anomaly, which propagates in the central Pacific warming. So really, one way to think of this is that when you have that central Pacific warming, sometimes it stays there, like the non-canonical ENSO. Sometimes it leads, it favors you know, a full-blown ENSO type variability that, it, that moves the anomaly in the, in, this, in, the, in the coast of South America. 
So it makes sense that you would expect that you know uh, this NPO pattern leads both types of answer variability. So let's focus on the southern pole of the NPO here, and let's ask which dynamics control the NPO variability, uh, and if the NPO southern pole variability is actually independent of the tropics. Now, interesting enough, if we take a power spectra of a sea level pressure record over Hawaii, which um, Jason have, uh, has found, uh, we find that here in blue that the power spectra is very red, especially at the low frequency, suggesting, in fact, that there is a coupling between the ocean and atmosphere uh, at the low frequency. Uh, so to investigate this question, we're going to make use of an atmospheric general circulation model. This is the AGCM from ICTP, also known as SPEEDY. And the way we're going to use this, then, is that uh, we're going to drive this model uh, with prescribed SST. And in particular, in the, we're going to use time dependency surface temperature anomalies between 1950 and 2008 in this region here uh, of, the, of the tropical Pacific, uh, in between 12 degrees of the equator. So just very narrow in the equator. Um, in the remaining region of the world, we're just going to use climatological sea surface temperature or a climatological seasonal cycle. Now, to acquire some statistical significance, we're going to repeat this forcing cycles 40 times so that we can generate an ensemble. And then we're going to address, we're going to see how this SST anomaly in the tropics, how it basically produces a response in the atmospheric variables over the extra tropics. And in particular, we will focus on sea level pressure response uh, and over the North Pacific, uh, sorry, over the southern pole of the NPO. So we could start analysis by just plotting a time series of this very long run uh, of the NPO in the southern pole. And this is the time series. So these are 2,200 years. And basically, this is like this continuous perpetual run where this forcing cycle is repeated 40 times. So this is the, the NPO signature uh, over the southern pole. And now we can ask, is there an emerging pattern of SST variability in the tropics uh, that is connected with this, uh, with this particular um, you know, index of, N of southern pole NPO variability. So in other words, is there a correlation between the AGCM NPO and this SSTA in the tropical Pacific during the winter? So we take this very long time series and we basically correlate it uh, for the winter month uh, with the SST that was used to force the run repeatedly. And if we do that, this is the pattern of correlation that emerges, uh, which I'm going to refer to as the NPO SSTA forcing pattern. And you can see correlations are quite high in the, you know, in the winter. They're almost 0.5 here. And if you look at the structure of the pattern, you compare that now with the non-canonical expression of ENSO uh, in this red box. Actually, let's zoom in that thing and, and obscure the high latitudes. You find that these two patterns are essentially very much the same, uh, if not identical, uh, which suggests that, in fact, the non-canonical ENSO has a teleconnection uh, onto the southern pole, or at least excites uh, partial. Uh, an important fraction of variability in the NPO southern pole. Now the question is how much of this variability is important in driving the decadal response of the North Pacific? Or in other words, let's ask the question, what fraction of the low frequency oceanic expression of the NPO, which is basically the NPGO, is controlled by this tropical teleconnection? Now the way to address that is to just take, for example, the uh, you know this long time series, produce an ensemble mean uh, uh, NPO index of the model, which is shown here from 1950 to 2008. And now we can take this index and we can integrate it uh, with an AR1 model to produce the NPGO index, or at least the NPGO hindcast from the model. And here the AR1 model is one that is forced by this NPO index with, uh, with the, the uh, damping term which, uh, with the time scale of about 10 months, which is what we have observed in the observations. Uh, and so this is what comes out. We can compare this now with the true NPGO index over this period. And this is here in blue. And the correlation is 0.5, which is highly significant. And the most of the correlation is really in the low frequency band. In fact, we can low pass these two time series. And if we do, the correlation goes to 0.85, which suggests, again, that this, uh, this hindcast of the AGCM, which is only driven by this NPO, with, with this, uh, by this SSC variable in the tropics, actually has a really incredible hindcast in reconstructing the NPGO, again suggesting that the tropics, and in particular this non-canonical or central Pacific warming uh, pattern, uh, is actually driving an NPGO response in the high latitude. So really, uh, in light of this, then you know our little framework uh, has it that we have the two modes of decadal variability. Uh, they're both forced by the atmosphere. 
they have a, an expression in the western boundary, both of them, uh, which we're not going to discuss here. Then we have that for the NPO, there's a, a high frequency response, and I have to change this diagram a little bit, that drives central Pacific warming in the, in the, in the spring-summer. And this one can favor the ENSO condition by weakening the Walker cell, as we know. And if it, this is the case, then we have a teleconnection back to the Aleutian Low and PDO through the, the so-called atmospheric bridge, and other people have also linked it to ENSO. Uh, however, if is the case, like in the recent decades, that uh, the central Pacific warming tends to linger around and kind of have an expression as, as a central Pacific warming, uh, which people refer to non-canonical ENSO. Now, we, this is a terminology Problem. I don't see this as a real answer event, but but just to stick with uh, some of the uh, of the literature so far. I but anyway. So if this is the case, then we have uh, a feedback back onto the NPO that gets integrated into the NPGO. So in some sense, the NPGO is the decadal expression of the Central Pacific warming, in the same way as the PDO is the somehow the decadal expression of the canonical answer. There's also another interesting aspect of this of this wheel here, that is that if the central Pacific warming does project, since the central Pacific warming does project on NPO, and NPO we know can actually trigger again central Pacific warming, it turns out that the sign of this circle is actually uh, such that this becomes a positive feedback. So winter central Pacific warming can trigger a positive phase of the southern pole of the NPO, uh, which means a low over Hawaii which in turn could, again, through the seasonal footprinting mechanism, lead to central Pacific warming in the following winter. And so this could produce a, a positive feedback. So this is kind of the evidence that I've collected so far uh, that uh, we, I wish to discuss you know, in terms of the paper. Thank you.